Hey there, Ginger with you, and I'm going to give you a little tour of something that came into my mailbox. I'm trained to look for marketing that's really, really good and you know all the little nuances that can really help on your conversion to keep prospects to, to real customers, like real clients, and real patients. So I thought I wanted to share it with you, go through what's good about it, what's bad about it, um, a lot of good stuff. But also to refresh your memory on, on a day's gone by. This one's like an oldie but a goodie that's been spun and nobody else is doing it right now. So that's why it really stands out. And that's what we always want to do when we go to the mailbox is stand out. Most people think mailbox marketing is dead. It is not. And a good marketing is dead. I don't see that much of it anymore. And so when I got this, I was like, I've got to share it with you. So you can have it. So, you know, if you don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Ginger Bratzel. And for many, many years, we worked exclusively in, in dentistry. But we found the techniques, the strategies, and the framework that we taught in the dental profession translate to other service providers, so healthcare providers, service-based businesses, and small businesses to get you more clients, customers, and patients. And so that's what we want to spend some time on. And I have something that I'm going to share with you, and we're going to dig in a little deeper and making um, some really good uh, frameworks to get you forward. So when it comes to mail, I think this is really important. Um, people over, mail can be expensive. It really, really, really can. So this one is a low cost um, technique, but it, what you spend an expense, we want to get more idea, eyeballs on. So the first job of a mail marketing piece, whatever it is, is to get read and not thrown in the trash. So that's why we talk about standing out. I don't want you ever to send anything in a plain white envelope. It's got to pop. You only get bills in plain white envelopes. So we want something that's a little different than everybody else has and to make it more attractive to get that second glance where it doesn't end up in the recycling bin or the trash right off. So it's got to get read. And if it's if we don't get past that readability or the 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 look of it, well, no matter what we have in it, no matter how great it is, how great our offer is, how great we are, what we're offering, our business, it just doesn't have impact. So I'm going to, this one's a little, um, like I said, old school. And it, this particular piece was actually called a free standing insert. It's also called a FSI. And you might not be familiar, familiar with those terms, but I know you've seen them in your lifetime. And you might have thought that they've gone away, which they really have. But this one is a new spin on that old technique that really makes a difference. So um, FSIs um, stand, you are usually a flyer and they get inserted into something, into bulk. So it's either into the newspaper when you open up the Sunday newspaper and all those coupons fall out. That was a FSI um, or FSIs. It was plural from all kinds of manufacturers. So they can put them in little booklets or they can be a single page. Um, they don't have to go just on Sunday, but we all are used to seeing those on the Sunday newspaper when they came in, but also they can be sent um, as a bulk in a mailing. So if there's um, most mail routes, either on Monday, Tuesday, I find, um, send out a bulk of these that you can get on a route and insert it. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And so you'll get, you know, uh, the carpet cleaner and you'll get the guy doing tile and someone in summertime, they're doing backyard stuff or lawn care. And so they all get put in there and you're kind of used to them. You know, they, they look like this. They're usually on gloss of paper. They're eight and a half by 11. And essentially, other than the picture and the words, they're, they're all the same. They get really lost in the shuffle. So that's why people don't think of them as a valuable tool because they haven't really seen it done well. Now, what's also about free in, um, standing inserts, these FSIs, they are not a really uh, individually sent. So they're not addressed to anyone. Um, they're not going to be in an envelope. These are loose. So you see them immediately. You get the message immediately. You get the, the overwhelming, uh, appeal of them or not appeal. So all these, uh, big time ad agencies use glossy photos and they keep trying to different photos and try to shock you or a coupon to get you to read it when you're just competing with them, each other and not standing out. So this one I'm going to show you is using an old school technique and it's, it's an oldie, but a goodie to get you to see it. And then, like I said, they usually fall out. They're not attached. They're not an envelope. They don't have a stamp on them. They don't have an address. They're just loose in there. So they slide out and that's the guts. That's what we always call the newspaper. So 
when um, we got the Sunday paper, I, I, I took those out. I put them separately. I went through my sections of the paper and then I went through meticulously every one of those because it was a sales circular in there or is it a coupon I was looking for? Uh, is it something new that's out and about that I wanted to see? So I gave them a little different preference and this is what they are. You know what they are. Um, and honestly, those other than the picture, they are pretty much all the same. They just kind of blend together. And um, you don't have to follow these rules. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. You don't have to follow these rules. It has to meet certain criteria to be sent out by the um, distributor. So if it's the mail or the, or the new, uh, newspaper, but it doesn't necessarily have to look like that. It can be a different size. It can be sometimes oddball sizes, different paper, because all of those are the same glossy paper. They all feel exactly the same. So that's what this one was so effective about. Now, because this is a male freestanding insert, I wanted to stand out in a male box. You have to understand your audience and your target where your piece is being distributed. And so um, when they pick it up, I want them to linger on it. I want to take a look at it. So when I got this piece in, I thought it was actually from a neighbor. I thought someone in the neighborhood had just stuck it in there. And I'll show you how they tricked me in a good way and how they're going to get traction from this. So freestanding inserts, why they, they're so appealing and why so many people wanted to use them, because what's old is what's new again. Very few people are doing them. If you look at the inserts you're getting in your mailbox, they've gotten thinner and thinner. Newspapers have gotten thinner and thinner. But today's technique, I'm specifically, it's only applicable to the mailbox because it's got to look like something that's part of the appeal and it's part of the psychology of it. It's got to go in the mailbox. So what you usually do is you get with your newspaper, you go talk, to, excuse me, your uh, post office, or you hire a service to do it. But let me tell you, this is so easy, you probably could do it yourself. Um, you go to your postmaster in the area you want to hit, and they have things, they have routes. So you're not sending to a particular zip code. You are sending to a route, and each city divides that circulation in a different way. But you're going to pick desirable routes where your ideal customer would be living. That's what you want to hit. Now, will it be 100% perfect? No. You'll get some people who are not your ideal customer in there, or you might miss a couple. But you want to get the biggest cluster of your most ideal customers, where the most of them are, and you pick that route. And it might be a couple routes to serve that. But you, you pick that, and then they have a particular day that they do inserts, and you have to arrange for it. And you get them printed up. You have them at the post office by a certain time and they get them inserted in these bundles to go out. So you usually pay by the thousand to do these. And so they'll tell you your route has 10,000 people in it. And so you're going to buy uh, for that 10,000 people and you're going to have to print up 10,000 pieces of paper to make it happen. So this is, if you want to get standing, if you want to stand out, don't be chintzy on the design of the actual insert. Don't fall into the, I want to get the glossy paper and I can do that really, really cheap and is less than a penny a piece or whatever. This one, I'd rather you send it to a smaller route and get who you need to and do it right. And so this is the piece that came in and I'm going to hold it up here. I wanted you to have a copy of it to look at, but it is notebook paper. It feels like notebook paper. It is matte and it looks like it's got handwriting on there. Now I went through with a black Sharpie and crossed out some identifying information for this particular company, but it was from a Windows company. It's a national change, but I opened it up. Um, it was sitting there with the inserts, but the way it stuck out, it looked like somebody just stuck it in my mailbox. And I honestly thought it was my neighbor, Tim, who does all kinds of stuff. He sticks it in my nail mailbox and I said, oh, it's a note from Tim. So I start reading it and it says, hi there, I'm Jim from blank and we've helped 845 local folks this year to upgrade their homes. If you're noticing problems with your windows or patio doors, I'd love to get you an affordable price during our summer savings. You can save X amount uh, off of windows, X amount off patio doors, and we have special financing. All of this is handwritten. So um, give me a ring for a price and I'm sure we can make your home more comfy and then there's Jim's phone number so it looked like Jim was driving around and was sticking these notes in there now can Jim do that no it's a federal offense and I bet some people even went down to the post office and complained that this guy is sticking stuff in there he did it all legit now let me go back to the other part of it news newspaper uh, it's 
The print looks like handwritten print. And the top of it is perforated. It's worn. Do you see how it I even looks mangled? And that, I don't think they went through and crumpled it, but just in the process, that's why it looks like a real note. This looks like it was left by somebody who knows me or were trying to get in touch with me in personal. Now, they did a lot of great things on it. That perforation made a big difference on this. Now, how do you do about doing something like this? Well, um, this is white paper that's close, just plain white paper. And then they went through on a piece of lined paper, wrote the note, handwritten note. This is not a font. This is really someone's handwriting. And then they print that in color right on there. And then they have machines that can make the perforations through that. Um, so, you know, that's one of the things we help our clients with is finding the right people to do that. Also, it's not the same size as a regular insert piece of paper. It's thinner. It's a bookmark and it's also longer. So it's stuck out the bottom and it's stuck out the top. So this one was a good one. This was really, really a good one. And you know, if I go back and I look at what they did, you know, it's unique to any other freestanding insert. You wouldn't even know it's a freestanding insert unless I just told you. Okay. So I told you that. Um, you might call it junk mail because you didn't look for it. You weren't expecting it, but it's enough to get a, a glance. Um, it's an odd size. Like I told you, they're not following the same dimensions. It's got the handwritten notebook paper. The perforation at the top makes it seem like someone ripped it out. It doesn't look cheap. It looks like he did it himself. Although um, it's what we call homemade, it's not really. It looks homemade, but it's not... Um, this probably cost uh, just as much as this, but this looks like it's stock and this looks like it's personal. And um, I put proofread and feedback. I don't know what I meant by that, but <laughs> it, that's what they did right. Now, what they could have done better, if I look at this, um, what they could have done better, I would kept the, the layout, I'd kept the print the way this looks, but I think they missed some really horrible um opportunities in here so they're talking about we've helped 500 uh, 854 people local folks that's vernacular this year to upgrade their women uh, their windows i would have said i you know we've helped people in your neighborhood um but i wouldn't put that at the top because this isn't about them we don't need jim to tell us how great he is i want him to say hey if you're noticing any problems i want him to start with the irritation are you noticing um leaking windows are you noticing after because we had a lot of hail storms um, leaking windows do you have broken windows um, are they noisy are they drafty um, summer's the perfect time to get these fixed and make it easy for you we've got special summer pricing and then i'd go into hey we've helped 854 people or we've helped um, 10 people just in your local area replace their windows and then i talk about the prices and stuff there is no deadline to take action that's what they missed there too um, and then on the back of this, which I didn't scan, they've got the disclaimer crap, the stuff your attorney puts in there. They could have addressed that all and said, we might be able to save you, uh, must uh, qualify special financing with approved credit. They could have put all that in handwriting and still, but they made it short and, um, they could have still done that. This, this loses it. I would have thought Jim gave me a personal note, was driving through the neighborhood and gave me a personal note until I got that. And then I had sat down and I was like, oh, it's a freestanding insert. I know what it is because I've been around those enough to do that. So that's what I would have tweaked on it. And, you know, for any service-based person um, or small businesses, they're buying you, okay? They're buying what you do. You are so wonderful and, and great at what you do. So it's really important to build that relationship. And this is a, it's just like a handwritten note that you would send somebody but this is an advertisement going forward. So that's what they did really well. And you could do this too. And tweaking it now, the what you put on it, this got it red. Now you can increase your conversion to buy what you put on it and making it happen and having clear vernacular um, about who your ideal client is, what they're looking for and putting it in their terms, not how great you are, but what you can do and help them do that. So these are kind of things that we do for our clients. I shouldn't say it. This is exactly what we do for our clients. Um, we get very crystal clear. So when they go off to do something like this, we, you know, we make sure they got uh, a good plan. They're not going to be wasting a bunch of money on it. We figure out a test market to do it all on. And it's all part of big plan. It's part, It's not, hey, I'm going to send out this one thing and it's going to make a difference. It's about a tool in the overall framework of growing their business. So if that interests you, if you're looking to grow your business, if you want to get 
more clients, customers, or patients, and you're trying to get keep more people in your business um, and keep them coming back, reach out to my team at results at gingerbratzel.com and say, hey, I'd love to schedule an exploratory call with Ginger. And we'll talk about specifics of your business. But I think this is a really valuable lesson to wet your whistle, get you looking at things a little differently, and tell you a little bit about what we do in making that happen. So we, you know, we're focused on small businesses and service-based businesses and making it happen. We're not helping the big chains make their jobs easier. We want to help you in your local market to be successful because I don't want you to be the best kept secret. Everyone needs to know about you and they need to be choosing you. Till next time, this is Ginger Brownsell. Can't look for, look, can't wait to talk to you and look forward to doing an exploratory call with you really soon. Take care.